Top Med Talk. So welcome back to Top Med Talk, live from Anesthesia 2018, the international meeting of the Royal College of Anesthetists here from the British Museum in London. And we've just had a special guest sit down with us, sitting down next to Professor Mike Grocott. Mike, why don't you introduce our special guest? It is my great pleasure uh, to introduce uh, Russell Ampofo, who is a colleague and friend, I believe, but he may, he may tell you otherwise. <laughs> That's not what he told me. <laughs> uh, who is the, the Director of Education, Training and Examinations at the Royal College of Anistis. Right, Russell, I Thank think I, I know a bit about you, buddy, right, apart from being a great man. My mum used to stick me when I was a kid on a bike and ride me through a tunnel across the Thames. She was a district nurse and she used to go to a place called Thamesmead. Indeed. Is yep. that where you're from, mate? That is indeed where I'm from, in the deepest, darkest Thamesmead in South London. Uh, full of concrete, yes, it's got the best concrete in town. Oh, so it, it was an, When it was built, it was an absolutely spectacular, for those people who don't know about Thamesmead, it was a spectacular <laughs> riverside <laughs> project. It was Xanadu, it was Kubla Khan, it was a pleasure <laughs> dome of fountains and lakes and I went there and I thought mum can't why can't we live here it's still a fantastic development it's somewhere that they're pouring money into to knock it down and redevelop again um, as we as a uh, Thames link and Crossrail go to Abbey Wood station because it's in a great location is it? it's just by fantastic. the river yeah the fantastic uh, zone four uh, right by the river lots of green space green chain walk running through it so so you, do you still live out there Ross? Uh, my mother does. I live not too far away from there, actually, uh, Belvedere. Belvedere, oh, yeah. Yeah, well. And Russell, this is not your first career, is it? No, it's not my first career. <laughs> well, what, did, what did you do before you came to the college? Thanks for bringing that. <laughs> good, looking, good looking boy like Russell. Let us guess. Desiree, what do you think Russell did? Give us a few guesses. Professional footballer, male model. All of the, yes, all of the above. <laughs> Russell, put us out of our misery. I, I played football uh, oh, full time, so uh, played for um, the great Gillingham FC, mighty Gillingham FC, the Jules. Now, so I grew up in uh, eventually in Welling in Kent. Were they in the same league? Was that the sort of Coke, I don't know, Pepsi light league or something? Was it? So there? interestingly enough, I went for a trial for Welling United, who are a non-league team in uh, in uh, Bexley, and I was turned down. wasn't good enough for Welling. And then was offered a contract later in life in uh, Gillingham. The mighty Gillingham. Didn't they get qu- quite a long way in the FA Cup at one stage? <laughs> like <laughs> through the first game or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably the netball team at Gillingham, <laughs> yes, probably. <laughs> so, si- seriously, guys, what a, what a great day. Yeah. Well, well done. This is yeah. a, a new venture for the college. Tell us a little bit about the history of that. So look, I'm, I'm really, really proud of what we've put together today and I think it's, uh, it's a signal of where the college is going, it's a signal of where anaesthesia in the UK is going. Um, we've taken um, our, we've had a real look at our education programme, um, we've spoken to our members, seen what they wanted to see, see what they liked, and we tested it out here and it seems to have been really successful, really proud. So Desiree, what, what do you think of the day so far? Oh, it's been brilliant. I mean, the the quality of speakers, everyone's absolutely fantastic. Having uh, uh, Professor Powis this morning talk about uh, the things he did and commend what you're doing in the college was wonderful to hear that as well. So um, it's, it's been a great uh, win for you all. Do you, do you think more meetings are going this way? We're doing a little bit less about difficult intubation, a bit more about population health and... Yeah, I, you know, I, I think so. Some of the meetings that we're talking about are. Um, I think more of them need to start having these conversations um, and expanding where, where we are going in anesthesia and uh, making sure we're getting it to the people on the ground that are actually in practice. So, yeah. Well, this is one of, you're part of the birthing team. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think, uh, I think it's, it's the right direction to go. It's the direction that the college is going. What we mustn't do is leave behind... Uh, the folk who are, you know, great practitioners of anaesthesia and, and want to continue to be great practitioner, practitioners of anaesthesia, predominantly within the operating theatre. And you know, it, anaesthesia is a broad church. Uh, the, there are great opportunities in perioperative medicine, but we've we've also got to nurture uh, the, the 
family the crown jewels, if you like, and continue doing what we've always done. Okay, so we're all in total agreement at that. Core speciality is still predominantly in the operating room, delivering world-class anesthesia that we've made look relatively easy. Absolutely. Russell, are you going to add to that? Yeah. Well, I was just going to ask a question to you, Monty. Mm. How does it feel for you? You've been involved with the college for a number of years. How does this meeting feel compared to other meetings that you've been within the college? I think it adds to the great portfolio of meetings we have. Some of them we go to that are world-class education about the delivery of the craft of anaesthesia, which we must not lose sight of because we've, we've made it look really, really safe and lots of people have made it look really, really easy. I don't want to say that lots of it's very, very complicated, but we have to keep that at the highest possible standards we have to have zero tolerance for that and we're close to that Mm. but the fact that we're broadening it out to accept the fact that they we have a public health population health challenge that we think we can be huge contributors to so i reflected earlier on steve powers the medical director of the nhs's 10 bullet points about what he thought the future of medicine was and unless i'm missing something our vision document checks everyone Mm. It checked mm. everyone. Mike, you're a big advocate of of this, the pop health, public health thing. Yeah, no, I, th- I think we, um, yeah, not terribly surprisingly, but I think we're, we're on the money for where the NHS is going. Uh, and I think other health systems, uh, wh- whilst the NHS may be derided from time to time as uh, low cost, and, and particularly you go to America and you, c- you can hear opinions which uh, Im- imply that, um, uh, you know, in, in old-fashioned terminology, it's a third-world health system. I think it's about as good as it gets. The, you know, the value is exceptional. The outcomes are good, but we've got to focus on making them better and best. Uh, and uh, you know, an extraordinary workforce. I don't. I don't think the U.S. knows what they're missing. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> when you, I mean, when you see what's here and and just my experience in working with you all, I just don't believe that they really understand what it what it can be. I mean, we all have, have our own challenges, of course, but. Um, there's world-class care here. So, so we, we reflect on this earlier, but we had a little visit into yeah. one of our hospitals yesterday. Can you imagine what it's like living in a world where you pitch up and get care like that and there's no billing, no. there's no co-payment, yeah. there's no secondary And you don't have to wait issues. forever to yeah. have it. And we've got mm-hmm. multiple robots in yeah. the procedure. We're just about to put in proton beam therapy. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. It's amazing. I mean, the, so the high point for me was the end of the first session. So Liam, Liam set out our stall uh, as a very forward-looking college. Uh, Paul Miles comes along and says, you guys are leading the world. Uh, you know, we're looking over from Australia and you're leading the world. And then Stephen Powers comes along and says, you know, these are the challenges of the NHS, perioperative medicine, it's absolutely on the money. It was, it was wonderful. So, so, Russell, when we did the last big survey, we've got another one coming up soon of co- people in the college and their opinions. When it came to the perioperative medicine question, only of the 5,000 or so responded, only 3% were an absolute no-no. If mm-hmm. you sort of mean. And yeah. I, I, I'm hoping they were a bit surprised because they make quite a lot of noise that there was such a small number of the ones who answered. Now, we've got to accept there could be a sampling issue there. Yeah. But do you sense, you've been in the college a while as well now, do you sense that we've gone from scepticism to all in? So, I, I mean, I've, I've been in the college for three years now, and I think when I came, there was almost this scepticism, the air of scepticism from a small contingent within the college. Um, and I think now that we've taken on and embraced our perioperative medicine strategy, it's in the curriculum, we're delivering it in our education events, we're delivering it via e-learning, we're delivering it via our MOOCs. It's actually been more accepted, I think, and it's, it's, I think we've moved on the conversation so much that we're focusing on other things, the big ticket items, the things that Anissa should be thinking about, value-based healthcare, the financing of the NHS, the future of anaesthesia and the specialty on the world stage. I, I think we've moved the conversation on so much, and I think it's down to... Um, I, don't know, I would say this, the college and its leadership and, and, and Liam as at the help. But I think that the mood music has changed so much and so dramatically since I've been here. So as a, an ex-professional footballer, um, do you think <laughs> if, if the college had a greater role in managing the England football team that we might be able to replicate 1966 where England appeared to, on a bit of a <laughs> fluke one might argue, win the World Cup and have been dwelling on that ever since doesn't Monty, look like a hope in hell to me though. Monty I think I'd, I'd probably go even further I think in <laughs> in 66 you probably remember that Jeff Hurst was actually going his his ambition was to 
clear the ball into the crowd, waste a bit of time. And he hit the bar, hit the, hit the ground, and that was a goal. And actually, I think we'll be more ambitious to actually look for that top corner. Do you think, think if we'd fully <laughs> embraced modern technology in 66 that they would have won the World Cup? Did that ball cross the line? <laughs> of course it did. Of course it did. <laughs> this is Desiree. This stuff's important to us. It's, I I get it. I and it's I don't really get important. actually yeah, I don't okay. get it. But <laughs> we still think we've got a chance. This is Gettysburg address level. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm recognizing that. Yeah. Desiree, final thoughts. Uh, no, great job today, guys. Thank you so much, and uh, look forward to Anesthesia 2019, 2020, and mm. all the the years to come. So Bionic that's work. infinity and beyond. Infinity on Bill Russell, ex potential male model, professional footballer. <laughs> any 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 final thoughts? <laughs> the flattery is amazing. It's brilliant. <laughs> um, yep, yeah, more of the same. Let's go. Let's look forward to next year. Let's do it. Okay, brilliant. folks. Thanks Ta- very much. Top Med Talk. Check out picks. Um, so you just know exactly what <laughs> what we're looking at here. And catch up afternoon. with us on social media. Social media. We'll be on Twitter and of course uh, LinkedIn and, and Instagram for sure. So, so, so we'll be back with you tomorrow from Anesthesia 2018, the international meeting of the Royal College of Anesthetists. For those of you listening around the world in the 80-plus countries who are following us, we met up with somebody yes. from the United Arab Emirates who's a fan. If you're listening, buddy, we're here in London thinking of you. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Top yeah. of tour. Thanks.